Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Ray Designs. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video, uh, so today I'm going to show off something I figured out. It's been bothering me for a while, I'd say about a year and a half, uh, and that is light mapping. A lot of people I know hate it, and some people don't understand it, so I'm going to share what I have figured out. So, anyway, I've had trouble with this, and I realized something. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's not as hard as it sounds, and a lot of places don't explain it right, and I'm not sure why. So anyway, I'm going to put my two cents in, and you know, I'm not an expert, so you see these green lines? These are seams. Now think of it this way. The reason these seams are appearing on here, okay, is because I've set up a UV to represent on a different grid this on a 2D plane. So these seams on a 2D plane, this will be flattened, this will be two. All these different sides, you can mess around with okay and the reason you'd mess around with them is either a for texturing you want to be able to change the size of the textures the tiling things like that uh, as well as light mapping and that's this is going to be about light mapping is something you have to tell the game engine so that it knows how to render shadows and light on your 3d model as well as the rest of the world properly otherwise it doesn't look right and it looks like crap so we're gonna avoid that <laughs> So see how this is split up with these green lines? Well, let me... All right, so you see these edges, right? You see the shadows, how they're hitting, right? So this looks right. If you set up your UVs right, this is how it's going to probably look in the game engine too. If you don't, you're going to have a shadow over here, going up here, and you're going to have this going over here, and it's just going to look ridiculous, you know? So for now, this is 3DS Max. This is an Unreal Engine 4 for those who are probably wondering. Um, 3DS Max 2016, by the way. It's a modular set I'm building, and I've already textured it. So we got this set up here. I got the UVs set up, so let me uh, go back here, show you what my UVs look like. Now I've already had this grid set up too, and I know it looks really weird because it's really dark lines, but um, I just wanted to show you where the squares are at, and what I'm about to explain to you real quick. Uh, also works well, I think, the best, but I haven't really f totally figured out how to do it, so I'll just point you in a direction of a video that will probably better explain it than I will. So here's the UV islands, okay? Bam! Covers the whole model. It turns red, right? So let's say that I just did that. That's going to be one part of this. And as you can see, it goes right where the seam is. So I've already set this up, but I'm just going to show you guys. So I had to set this up properly. You want to keep in mind um, you want to separate the islands well enough from other pieces. I might have a, a slight padding problem. Maybe too much padding or too less. I might have to do a little bit more on the outside. Normally it does do it, but uh, it might not be good enough. Um, so when you import Unreal Engine, even though it does it, it might not be what you need. So I got different faces here. This one's going to show up. See, it's over here. So see, this should be bigger this right here is pretty big um, probably should be more representation of what it is but it's it's working out um, here's a side here's a side see those are different so that might be another issue as to why some of these at the end here don't look right even though the rest seems to look fine when you burn it when it gets burned into the texture or an overlay on the texture in Unreal Engine 4 that's basically what they're doing um, it won't look right the pixelation versus one side and another uh, and it does matter for the skewing to a point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain in a second. Um, when you have a shadow map resolution at a certain setting, right, and you have one of these either way, way, way too big or way, way, way too small, when it renders in Unreal Engine 4, it will have a different shadow map. Um, that's only if you go really crazy, though. Usually within a certain zone of sizing it, it won't matter. It will just kind of naturally go up and down. Um, but I do notice that with smaller pieces on a model, if you don't up those islands, they look like crap. So that's just a little bit of advice on that. You just kind of want to even it out and fill up as much space as possible. I already have this set up. It's Map Channel 2. Map Channel 2 is UV Channel 1 in Unreal Engine 4. Map Channel 1 is UV Channel 0 in Unreal Engine 4. I'm going to say that a few times just so that people kind of get that concept. So that's set up. I've already set it up, so this should look the way it does here on Unreal Engine. This should actually have shadows burned in here, too, from the light. So that's set up. 
we close that oh wait you know what I gotta actually explain something so I've already set up the uh, preferences these normally are on already so I'm gonna make these a little more light so you can see the uh, the grid but you can also see the UVs okay so I've already set up the grid size too which to do this properly you have to think of it this way so your shadow map resolution is going to be 64 by 64 per se right so you want to divide six, uh, 1 by 64 and put what you get as a result in the grid size it is going to even it out for a reason because it's a grid so it's going to even it out right so you put that in don't worry it's fine once that's put in it will do this these will change right here okay so when that changes then you know that you can snap these to the grid you'll you'll be able to understand this better more and more what you can do it will just naturally come to you so for those out there who think it won't trust me it just happened like the other day just figured this out bam <laughs> I walked away from it from so long and then all of a sudden I'm just like oh I get it okay so here's the the setting here so that's all set right so let's go into Unreal Engine 4 I've already got this set up alright so this is already built okay I've already built this because it takes a while to do and trust me I'm not BSing anybody I have no reason to gain anything uh, but this is my experience right now with this I gotta work on it so I just wanted to make sure it's working properly and for the most part it is um, it looks pretty realistic you know even the spheres here and the uh, the shadowing it's pretty good this is a little bit you know bleeding from somewhere else um, and it, it yeah cuz it's not as you can see hold on as you can see over here um, it's not past this point if it was I could understand that and the reason it doesn't make sense is because it's also bleeding over here even though this isn't fully connecting so that's bleeding so the best way to kind of work with that is uh, okay so let's say this right here that's highlighted is BSP it's not it's a 3D, uh, 3D mesh so that would be a 3D model so whenever you hear 3D mesh it means 3D model these are 3D models okay but let's just pretend the ground is a BSP alright so the difference in shadow mapping matters when you bring in a 3D model versus having the BSP. This has shadows, okay? This is dynamic over here. But let's just say that these were burned in, like these shadows were, okay? Um, the lower the shadow map resolution on a BSP, and you can right click on the BSP and set the settings as proper, you know, just like you would do on your model. Um, has to be lower for it to look better it's opposite of a 3d model where the 3d model has to be a higher uh, shadow map resolution to look better so keep that in mind and even out between the two so like I said 64 okay I set it up for 32 but I bumped it up one on this so it's about 64 is what I'm kinda aiming for right okay so then I can work with like increments of 6 12 I mean uh, you get my point all right <laughs> long day so this is all set up it's already showing the shadows proper because I set up the UVs properly so I'm gonna go into my assets real quick double click so I got the textures set up um, I haven't set up the normals or anything like that but that's it's not a big deal we can do that later so for now let me get to the shadow map resolution okay so under static mesh settings light map resolution is what it's called I have it to th uh, 64. I had it to 32, but it was doing a lot more bleeding. Now I think I can go up to 128, but I think it started bleeding again. So 64 was like the midpoint on the model itself. But you can change it once you import it, so it will work a little bit better. All right, that's just on this model. That's not the BSP brush. So let me. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to click that. Um, let me go on to making a BSP real quick geometry alright let's just make a simple box right oh shoot I gotta drag and drop that's right dang it's a big box alright so this is a BSP right so let's say I go under um I 
I know that there was like properties or something. Oh yeah, there is. It's on the side. Durr. Sorry about that. Um. <laughs> woo. Okay, so light map resolution. See, this is set up for uh, 32. So they're working as a default around 32, 64, I guess. Either that or for some reason it's just set up that way. Um, and you can drag this down one more and make it look better if you want. You know, that's not a problem. Uh, you just want to keep it even uh, with the 3D model because if you mess with it too much, one shadow is going to either look way too good versus another and uh, it's not going to look right. So you want to make sure. Light mass settings, I don't really mess with, but um, shadow and direct only. Like a lot of these, i got to kind of look into it. Um, use emissive for static lighting. Oh yeah, okay, this is the BSP setting. So yeah, you can set your BSPs as uh, emissive. So you can put on like a yellow or like a, a high white color. Make it really emissive like a light. And then you can even make it cast light. So you, in diffuse boost, how it looks when it's really like lighting up. <laughs> so this is how you use this engine. Like it's really cool once you figure out some of the basics. Like... So anyway, that's a BSP. You can set up the settings on the side here, you know, and you can even do surface materials, all sorts of different things that I don't fully understand yet, uh, but yeah. So I hope this tutorial was pretty straightforward, not too long. Uh, might have rambled there a little bit, but, you know, once you figure this out for yourself, man, you're going to feel so, so empowered. Like, you're just, like, half of the battle's done. So if you can do this on complex models, man, there you go. A lot of places are looking for people that are willing to do this. <laughs> uh, so for the most part, as you can see, it rendered properly. Um, for the sake of it, you know, just keep in mind that every asset has to be done this way. It has to be set up properly. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to look right. So if you want your level to look right, this has to be a major step in your... 3D modeling process. Now see obviously again um, I have some shadow problems. They kind of go under here and this one's still going outward, right? So this might even be because it's um like half a grid point below this. That might actually be why it's doing that. But even if it isn't, you can always fix that, you know what I mean? Another thing that I realized you can do uh, before we go here is that um that doesn't look great, but in these corners, okay, you would still kind of have like ambient occlusion in the shadowy areas, way better than this. So you can bake on these textures, or at least on your model in 3ds Max or Maya, um, have the textures on it, right, and bake a shadowy ambience in the right spots. And bake means burn, or make an overlay on your texture and model to look like it actually is being shadowed. So if you add that to this effect already being done in the game engine, it looks even better. It looks mad realistic. <laughs> so um, I share some videos sometimes on my Facebook uh, of architectural designs, interior designs, things like that, because that's really what I'm interested in. Um, I'm trying to learn Revit architecture better. Uh, I really got to get on AutoCAD. I know that's the last program that I said I would really leave it for last only because to me it's kind of really boring but it still works for what I need to do uh, Revit does too pretty well so that's why I use that a lot um, but I only use it for large areas like a mall uh, office building apartment building uh, designs like that that I really I'm gonna just use a lot of copy and paste anyway so this thing will realistically generate your buildings for you generate uh, whatever you're trying to build you have real windows, doors, stuff like that. You can make your own. You can import your own. You can download them places. You know, you can buy them. Uh, but you'll be able to use the program to create realistic settings um, at a larger scale. So you you might want to create one house. Well, you can do it with that program. Uh, I usually just do it by hand. But some people like to do everything with a builder or building builder <laughs> and you can mess with that later on the problem is you use another program so I would advise people to get used to doing it by hand the best you can um, but in case like whoever you may work for or a project you're working on requires like Revit or AutoCAD then get used to that as well so for the most part you understand 
uh, how light maps work. And basically, another point to be aware of is that when it when it renders, okay, the shadows across the UVs, and you see this in a 2D state. So remember, this is a representation of this 3D, okay. Now it's just doing a pass of light from light to dark, okay? And it comes down at an angle, or no, it comes down up or down, I believe. Up or down or at an angle, when it renders in Unreal Engine 4. So, I know there's an importance of that, and how the shadows actually render, and how far they'll render, you know what I mean? That's why they tell you to have a few pixels in between, because then the shadow will disappear before it starts bleeding on other islands. So that's what you got to keep in mind because you don't know where that shadow is going to be going and what direction unless you think of that and realize okay it's going to do this as a pass you know just to kind of get a concept and then it's going to rebuild it in the world properly so again map channel 2 make sure that's what it is before you even start doing anything otherwise when you go and you do this it's going to ask you abandon save whatever and if you don't push the right button well there goes all your work um, you can also save the UVs put them wherever you know I put it in a folder and you can then reload them later so the same thing with the texture UVs you know and if you don't like it save it delete it change it boom easy load it done <laughs> so alright guys uh, it's been a long day I have to go to bed about three hours of sleep I gotta wake up go to work but I figured you guys deserve another video sorry it's a little bit long I might redo it either way enjoy Keep doing what you're doing, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.